Hi guys, so for today's flip lesson I'm going to be talking a little bit about an introduction to linear algebra, which is uh, essentially the algebra, the mathematics of doing things with lines, linear relationships, okay? Uh, a lot of it's going to do with things that look like this. We have a Cartesian plane here, y-axis, x-axis. It was an excellent development by René Descartes who came up with it as a way of solving some very difficult problems using algebra, uh, sorry, geometry, rather than just plain uh, pen and paper and trying to nut it out. And essentially you're creating a plane, a space, where you can do all kinds of operations inside it. You can uh, create systems, you can create shapes, uh, you can create 3D dimensional things, do things with points, it's excellent. There are so many uh, powerful uh, applications of linear algebra, it's crazy. Uh, engineering, the sciences, business world, computer science. Uh, seriously, if you go anywhere that you think you're going to need mathematics, this is going to be a massive, massive area of it. Okay, so just a couple of basic things first. So when we got our points in our Cartesian plane, they are written in what we call an ordered pair. Which So we have brackets and you have the x value, then the y value. It's always going to be like that, okay? When we're dealing with x and y axis, it's an ordered pair of two values. The first one is the x value, the second one is the y value, all the time, okay? Don't worry about whether any special cases, that is what it's going to be. Um, okay, we've got different quarters. So here's Q1, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter fourth quarter, don't worry too much about that, uh, it's just sometimes you might refer to things like that. This here, as we'll see later on, is a form of a line, okay? Essentially, this is an equation that will give you all the points that rest on this line, okay? That's the great thing about lines, you create a system, a set of points that all sit on top of that line, okay? So first, I want to have a look at the gradient of a slope. So again, these are just going to be going through some of the uh, basic issues that there are with the linear algebra that we're doing in grade 9 this year, or this term even. Right, so we have a Cartesian plane. I've zoomed in a little bit, I've drawn a line, and I've marked a couple of points. Now, we've looked at, and the slope of a line is always the rise of the line over the run of the line. Okay, what that means is how far... So if we choose any point on my line, I'm going to choose P1, that's point number 1, and I am wanting to know if I choose any other point, point 2. I'll just take that one. However much I go up from point 1 to point 2, that's my rise. However much I go across from point 1 to point 2, that is my run. Okay? So sometimes you're given your line on a graph where you can quite easily count the spaces between those those points and it's quite easy to do that, okay? However, not, or, that's not always going to be the case. You might not even give, be given something that's drawn, you might just be given some points. So, if that's the case, uh, we know that this distance here, if we just have any x value, here's my first x value, here's my second x value, that are associated with point one, point two, okay? This distance between them is the second one minus the first, okay? So think about it as in, we've got this larger distance minus the smaller distance gives us this bit in the middle. Same thing happening here with this y2 minus y1. So, instead of having the rise over the run, we can have y2 minus y1, which is this distance here, over the run, x2 minus x1, which is this distance here. If you have two points of a line, using this method will always work. Okay, as long as you choose the, as long as you substitute the correct x1, x2s into the right place here, always going to work. It's always going to work out whether you're positive or negative slope. Which brings us to this down here. If you have a look here, this is just a little description of positive and negative slopes and what they look like, okay? So, your rise always goes this way, towards positive x, okay? It never changes. So, sorry, you run, you run, 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 run always goes this way. Right. So we come across with our run, and you think to yourself, does my rise go up, or does my rise go down? Okay, if my rise goes up to get to the line, see, across and then up, positive rise, positive slope. 
If I go across and have to drop down to get to the line, that's a negative rise, negative slope. Okay? Now, rather than try and think of some kind of way of remembering that, just try and remember instead that lines that go up this way are positive, lines that go down this way are negative. Okay, that's probably a better way of thinking about it. Okay, so that's one way of finding the gradient of a line. Right, this one here is the equation of a line. Uh, this is probably the more familiar way that you'll see linear equations, which is what this is called, an equation that gives a line. This is the most more familiar form that you'll see it happening in, where we have some y value, some number m, an x value, plus some num number c. Okay? Now they correspond, if it's in this form, to the m is the slope of the line, and the c is the y-intercept of the line. Okay? Now we'll see how powerful that understanding is in a moment, but for now, I just want to show a couple of quick examples that if we have a linear equation that is y equals 4x plus 5, we can have a look at that and see that the slope is equal to 4 and the y-intercept is equal to 5. So, see, here's our m value, here's our c value, okay? Now, just the other case that can happen, y equals negative a half x minus 9. Now, I'm just, I'm just making these linear equations up from anywhere, it doesn't matter. Right. The sign here, negative, that is associated with the slope. So we have a slope of negative half. Okay? Now, same thing here with our y-intercept. See, the sign that's here stays with this one. Okay? So, minus 9, that means our y-intercept is going to be negative 9. Okay? So, uh, you can change your linear equations to make them look like that. And if you can, those things will always be the case. Right, here we have graphing a straight line. So there's two methods that we're going to look at uh, in this video. First is this one here, using the gradient intercept method, okay? Which is when we have a, a line in the form y equals mx plus c, okay? So I'm going to use it as an example, y equals negative 2x plus 5, okay? Two-step process to this one. So first, locate your y-intercept. That's quite easy because here we've been given our linear equation already in the form of y equals something x plus something, okay? Uh, we can just immediately look at that and say, right, c is my y-intercept, that means my y-intercept must equal 5, okay? Done. So then, we go over onto our graph, here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis. y-intercept cross is where it crosses the y-axis, okay? So for my y-intercept is 5, I come up the y-axis to find 5, there's my y-intercept. Okay, right, finding the slope. If I look at my uh, linear equation, y equals negative 2x plus 5, I look here at where my slope is. Slope is the m, remember? So that's the one that's just in front of the x. So if I look at that, my slope is negative 2. But it might be easier to think about it as a fraction. Any number that's just sitting there by itself, think about it with a 1 under, as its denominator. And so you have a slope of negative 2 over 1. So that, the reason why we write it like that is because it corresponds quite nicely to the rise over the run. Okay, so our rise is negative 2 and our run is 1. So that means that for every 1 that we go across, we have to go 2 down to get our slope. So let's come over here. Here was my y-intercept of 5. I come across 1, I go down 2, mark my next point, I have two points, I can draw a line, I draw it straight through. Okay, so that's method one, called the gradient intercept method. Now method number two, which I actually think, if your algebra is good and you're fairly good at rearranging equations, this is probably the easier of the two, by far. Like seriously, seriously, by far, this is way easier. Right, so let's take another linear equation, 2x minus y equals negative 5. Okay, it might look a bit scary to start off with, but just roll with it up. Just, just uh, trust me, this is an easy way. Right, step number one, find your y-intercept, okay? So, my y at my y-intercept, here, like, let's pretend we've already found it, at this, all the way along the y-axis, x is zero. See, zero is here, and so all the way along the y, x is zero. So, 
we know that wherever the point is on the y-axis, the x is always going to be zero. So we chuck x being zero into our equation. So, therefore, 2x minus y equals 5. So, substitute my zero, 2 times zero minus y equals negative 5. Right, I just want y on its own. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, so I don't have negative y anymore. So, my, therefore, my y is 5, because negative y divided by negative 1 is y. Negative 5 divided by negative 1 is 5. So we're left with y is 5. A good thing for you to get into practice now is then to state straight away my first point is equal to x is 0, y is 5. So my point 1 is 0, 5. So you know. Go straight over to your graph, find it. x is 0, y is 5, cross. Bang, there it is. Uh, number 2, find your x-intercept. So at my x-intercept, where the graph, where the line crosses the x-axis, that is where y equals 0, because all the way along this line, y is equal to 0. So we set y is equal to 0. Therefore, 2x minus y is negative 5. So 2x, uh, sorry, substitute y is 0. So I'm left with 2x minus 0 is negative 5. I just want x on its own, so I divide both sides by 2. 2x divided by 2 is just x. Negative 5 divided by 2 is negative 2.5. Straight away, write down point number 2 is equal to negative 2.5 comma 0. My x value is negative 2.5. My y value is 0 because I set it to being 0. You found point 2. Come straight over here. Find it. Going across to the negative 2.5 in the x-axis and zero, so it stays on the line, make a cross, as soon as you've got two points, you can draw your line. Okay, that's it for this introduction to linear algebra. Really want to encourage you to look over those, I've got some examples of some uh, questions and some good introductions into some of the terms and things that you would want to become familiar with seeing. Okay, have a good day.